Hang on, buddy. Well, we're here for you, Trev. I'm working the night shift when I see two guys dragging their friend into the ER. Trevor? Turns out we know this guy. It's a very sad sight for me. It's Dr. Bob, Trevor. Uh-huh. Because this was an EMT who used to bring patients to our ER. He had suffered a fractured verba on the job and had been given lots of pain medications, became addicted, and eventually started using heroin. Oh, uh, see. Let's get him into bay one. This is an opiate overdose. First thing we do when we see a patient with a drug overdose is do the ABCs. We take care of his airway, make sure he's breathing, check his circulation, those type of things, which we immediately do. And I can see right away, this looks like a pretty severe overdose. So when I did my primary survey on Trevor, the first thing I did was look at his pupils. Um, pupils are generally small with a drug overdose. His were kind of mid-position, but they were sluggishly responsive to light. Then I search him to see, does he have any needle tracks that would indicate that he's been slamming drugs or using the drug intravenously. So I do a search to see if there's any other cause of him, obvious cause of him being out of it. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Has he been using? He stopped, he's been in rehab. We're in his recovery group. He's been really committed to staying clean. He and his wife are about to have another baby. Hearing that he's about to have another child makes me feel even worse about the situation. We came to pick him up for a meeting. We found him like this. Heather asked us to bring him to the ER while she gets someone to look after their son. So I searched for needle marks, and I didn't find any. But drug addicts are very clever at hiding needle marks. Stephanie, let's give him a bolus of saline. Trevor, did you use heroin tonight? Oh, boy. It seems pretty certain that he's back on heroin, but I'm going to look for other causes, too. All right, let's get a stat blood glucose, please. Maybe he has a low blood sugar. That can cause very similar symptoms. Take a deep breath, come on. Blood sugar's normal. His breathing is a little bit slow, but he doesn't have a fever, so his vital signs look pretty good except for the slow breathing. Trevor? Heather? How could you? You promised. I didn't. Trevor's wife arrives, and she is understandably distraught. Heather, I'm going to give him something that will reverse this very quickly. Now that I'm convinced that this is probably a heroin overdose, come on, Trevor, time to wake up. I'm going to go ahead and give him a drug to reverse the overdose. Here we go. There goes the magic. The drug is called naloxone, and it blocks the opiate effect on the body. There's really no downside to using it. Time to wake up. Naloxone's in. It's in. OK. Come on. Usually, it's startling. They wake up, they become alert, and in many cases, they'll actually start to withdraw because it blocks it so completely. Wake up. Nothing happens. Let's give him another two milligrams of naloxone, please. We give him another two milligrams. It's given? It's given. I don't know why it's not working. Now, I'm getting worried. This does not look like an opiate overdose because it works every single time and it's not working. What's wrong with him? I don't know yet, Heather. But the naloxone we used didn't work. Stephanie, let's get a CBC, CMP, blood cultures, blood alcohol, and a urine tox screen, please. So now I have to start thinking about other causes. Could it be an electrolyte imbalance? Did he take another drug? Does he have an infection? And I have to start thinking about him right now. Trevor, open your eyes for me. Come on. I notice he has a lot of trouble keeping his eyes open. Come on, try. Open them. Can you open your eyes? Open your eyes. When I look in his eyes, his eyes seem to be going in different directions. We call that disconjugate gaze. That goes along with a neurologic problem. Trevor, squeeze my hand. Come on. I notice that he has increasing weakness in his arms and hands. Squeeze my hand. Come on. It became obvious to me that he's losing the ability to protect his airway. His inhalation is dropping. Come Dr. On. Bob, his lips are turning blue. Sets are down to 88%. He's not handling secretions. He can't swallow. He's not protecting his airway. I'm going to have to intubate him and ventilate him. Let's go respiratory. I'm going to intubate. Heather, it's probably best if you three guys go wait in the waiting room. I'll come see you as soon as I know something else, OK? 
I was hoping for an answer when the laboratory data came back. But guess what? Completely normal. So my next concern is that he either has a neurologic condition like a stroke or Guillain-Barre, which is another paralytic type illness that can come from the brain. Call radiology, tell him we're gonna do a stat CT and MRI of his brain, okay? Meanwhile, I go to update his wife and his friends. Good news. The tests we ran prove there are no drugs in Trevor's system. So he isn't using? Nope. Oh, thank God. So I had to tell them some good news. There's no opiates on board. Some bad news. Then what is wrong with him? I have no idea what's wrong with him. I don't know. But I've sent him for a CT and MRI of his brain. Hopefully, we'll get some answers. OK. OK. Thank you, Dr. Bob. OK, thank you. <sighs> nothing? Absolutely nothing. When the news came back that the CT scan and the MRI of the brain were normal, I still had no idea what's going on with Trevor. OK. Stephanie, let's set up for an LP. So now the only thing left that I can think of right now is he must have an infection around his brain. He either has encephalitis or meningitis, both of which could cause symptoms very similar to this. He has to get a lumbar puncture right now so I can look at that fluid. The only thing left that he seems to be able to do at this point is wiggle his toes. So this is a descending paralysis. Trevor, if you can understand me, wiggle your toes. He can move his feet on command. So it seems like his brain is processing what he's hearing. Listen, we had to intubate you, and I'm going to have to perform a lumbar puncture on you. So we'll be turning you on your side. You understand? OK, OK. OK, get you right up on your side here. Here we go. Exposing his back and his lower back, Wow. I noticed a red swollen area just above his buttock. Trevor. It felt warm to the touch. When I push right there, does that hurt? I take that to mean yes. Cancel the LP. Can somebody get me the ultrasound? I postponed the lumbar puncture, because if this is what I think it is, I might have the answer. What is that? That's a subcutaneous abscess. Did Trevor ever use heroin by skin popping? Skin popping is something that heroin addicts do when they run out of veins. They shoot it under the skin. It's absorbed by the body, and they still get high. Yeah, he used to, um, right around there so no one would see the marks. 